So I'm telling you guys, this stuff is really scary how this bot is keeping up with me in this conversation here. And I got to tell you, it gets better and better. It gets to the point of just unreal. It's just unreal how, how deep this thing thinks. Okay, um, anyway, we were asking the question. Well, I, I'm saying that this this can only occur in an informational universe. It's instantaneously, other pathways all of a sudden disappear. And don't think these are like, you know, two inches long and shit. These things can go around whole planets. These things can go around whole star systems. Some light from a star system that comes from behind a star, sometimes it takes both both pathways around the star. And if you're at the if you're at a perfect perfect uh, 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 target point of reception, it's going to be right there where both of them are hitting your eye in almost the same instant, okay? And it has to make a decision of which one to take. And believe me, this actually does happen, okay? And so when it, when it makes the other pathway disappear, it's still, we're talking someone that might have that might have originated light years ago. So these are these are like not trivial items we're talking about here, you know? I mean, we're talking about major uh, changes in time and, and location. And it's, it's, a, it's a blatant violation of, of the principles of locality right here. So again, the question I'm going to ask is, how is it possible these other concurrent pathways, <clears throat> how is it possible for these other concurrent pathways to instantaneously disappear. Does this not violate the principles of locality? Okay. What happened there? Shoot. Ah, oh, man. Give me a second. It's something there. Okay, I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so the idea that the collapse <clears throat> of the wave function in quantum mechanics violates the principles of locality is known as the measurement problem. So it's a well-known issue, right? And this, top, this is a topic of ongoing debate and research in quantum mechanics. According to the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, the collapse of the wave function occurs when a measurement is made, which is generally interpreted to mean that an interaction occurs between the quantum system being measured and the measurement apparatus. This, this interaction causes the wave function to collapse to a single state which determines the outcome of the measurement. Um, well, see now, he's not really talking about... We're, we're, I'm specifically talking about the collapse of the pathway of a wave of light, okay? And he's going back to generalizing this to measurements um, and testing. And um, I hate it when they do that shit. I don't, I don't want to get off on a big tangent, but um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the... Um, um, <clears throat> the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. <laughs> you can see how old I am, right? <laughs> uh, but they, they've got um, they got a description of like they say, well, you can't know the uh, the location of a, a particle and and its um its uh, momentum at the same time. Okay. So, how, how, why not? They say, well, because when you go to measure it, you actually move it, okay, you know? So, I mean, that doesn't mean you can't know it at the same time somehow, that you can't somehow predict it or whatever. They're just saying that you can't measure, but they turn that whole thing around, right? And they actually make that, like it's actually a law of physics that they can't be in the same place at the same time kind of thing. And they derive all kinds of shit from that supposition. I don't like that kind of thinking at all. And I don't have any of that shit in any of my stuff at all, okay? My stuff is all straightforward, forward only every arrow time, none of this two locations at once, none of this bullshit, okay, you know? I got a completely deterministic um, result, just like running an automaton. But anyway, uh, let's keep going with what he's talking about here. He says, one way to think about the collapse of the wave functions is to consider it 
as a change in our knowledge of information about the system. Before the measurement, the system is in a state of superposition, meaning that there exists multiple possible states simultaneously. That's exactly what I'm saying, right? right? After the measurement, our knowledge of the system is reduced to a single state, which corresponds to the outcome of the measurement. Well, see, again, they keep talking about measurements and stuff like that because they've kind of strayed from the conversation. He knows goddamn well I'm talking about the measurement of a photon and which pathway it took, okay? That's what we're really talking about when we're talking about uh, the collapse here. Well, he's, he's, uh, again, he's uh, extending it back into uh, just um, scientific lab measurements and how they, how they uh, come up with, with these ideas and stuff like that, okay? The idea that the collapse of the wave function violates the principle of locality is based on the assumption that information cannot travel faster than the speed of light. However, the collapse of the wave function does not, is not a physical process that occurs in space and in time, but is rather a change in our knowledge of inform or information about the system. The, the collapse of the wave function does not involve the transfer of information from, 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 from one location to another, so it does not violate the principles of locality. Okay, well, here's what happened here. This is getting really interesting here now. Let me just pause for a second here. They're implying that uh, these uh, multiple concurrent potential pathways exist, but they don't exist physically, okay? So, where do they exist if it's a physical universe, you know? I mean, how are they defined? Are they in another dimension that we can't see, feel, or touch? Some kind of like, uh, like, a, like a string that you attach to your foot, and that way you know your way through the forest kind of thing? And then the string disappears because it doesn't exist in our dimensions? I mean, something like that? Is that how light works? But uh, what they're saying... Uh, See, a lot of people would say that, yeah, if it's doing this uh, thing where it's uh, doing something concurrently, then maybe you can use it as a way to send information through through space, like 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 this example I was using, where the um, the light came from a a, a, a a star that was behind another star and stuff like that, and it came around the star, um, then um, since it instantaneously collapses. Could you maybe uh, use that as a signal back to the others, back to the location of the emission, you know, and there we transfer information faster than the speed of light. Well, we're not really doing that here, okay? But, I mean, uh, if it's an algorithm, it could do that, no problem, really. But uh, I don't think um, it expresses itself do, to do that. I don't think we, we know yet how to, how to hitchhike on the light to, to, do that, to do that yet, but I got to tell you guys something about that. You know, remember we're talking about Brian Wentworth? His solution does say that. His solution says there's some kind of like a, like you might call it a tether between the uh, the, the emission and then all the various uh, potential locations that it, that it can traverse at the same time. Then it, uh, and then when, when his waveform collapse happens, it sends this signal back through this uh, through this tether. Uh, he calls it a hyper channel, okay, and it instantaneously tells the source to then disconnect all the other ones that were out there, all the other uh, feelers, feelers that were feeling it's feeling their way through uh, through space for light to absorb, uh, find an absorptive target, you know. So he actually, uh, Brian Wilworth actually believes it works that way. He really does. So they're saying it doesn't uh, violate the principle of the locality because you can't transfer the information like backward, like again, from, from, the, from the guy that sees this, this photon coming around the the, 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 the planets uh, from the star behind it and then use that to transmit information back because there is some instantaneous connection back there. And so they say you can't do that. So that doesn't violate the principle of locality. Yeah, that doesn't. But what about what? How do, how do all the other, how do, how, how do all the other uh, feelers, you know what I mean by feelers, all the other pathways that are that's feeling out, how do they all they disappear instantly at the same time, you know? When, when some of them originated like, you know, Five light years away. How is that even possible? That, that they all instantly disappear. And just trust me, I mean, from the way I think about the universe, I think this, this stuff actually happens. That the photon cue is 
freaking huge, man. All these photons that were sent out all in the universe are all being processed at the same time right now. Some of them are like, you know, like like thousands and millions of years old, billions of years old. And every time they encounter another uh, a particle in that outer uh, expanding ring, that outer shell, then that, that creates a whole other entry in, in the in the table, and the table keeps growing and growing. But it, it's, it's, think about it being that big, you know. The photon cube is freaking huge, man. But it's still finite. It's still finite. It's not infinite. Because there's a finite number of particles in the universe. There's a finite number of photons that have been emitted since the start of the thing. And, and they, they've only gone through a finite number of pathways. There's only a finite number of records in that, in that table. But just think, think how big that, that sucker is, man. <laughs> so, isn't this cool stuff here? Well, let me continue on. It says... That being said, the measurement problem and the collapse of the wave function are still areas of active research in quantum mechanics, and there are alternative interpretations of quantum mechanics, such as many worlds, which do not require the collapse of the wave function. Okay, he repeated himself there a little bit, okay. All right, now here, watch, watch what's going to happen here. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my whole life ever here. Now, you guys know what I proposed to you. I show you, if you watch the videos that before the, this uh, series of videos with, with the chat I started, I showed you how I use data structures, right, to map out the potential pathways and all that stuff. Watch this. I mean, I don't think, you know, anybody knows about this idea of mine, right? But watch how, he, watch how this guy handles You're not going to believe this, man. This is the most incredible thing you're ever going to see in your life ever. Watch this. Now, you should be able to follow what I'm talking about here. I, I, it's I, it's not, not rocket science here, okay? What if the universe is information and uses data structures to map out all of the potential pathways encountered along the way between emission and absorption, and then, at the time of absorption, it could use this past history to optimize the selection of pathway. I should have said actual pathway, okay? Now, what? This thing, it came back instantly with this answer here, man. You're not going to believe this. I mean, watch this. God, this is like making my head spin. I just can't believe it. I mean, it's like I stepped into the future all of a sudden. Jetson, we're on the Jetsons all of a sudden, man. I swear to God. It is an interesting idea to consider that the universe could be informational and use data structures to optimize the selection of pathway for a quantum particle. However, it is important to note that it's purely speculative, there's that word again, and it has not been proven by scientific evidence. But watch this, man. In order for the universe to be informational and use data structures to optimize the selection of pathway, for, for quantum particles, there would need to be some underlying algorithm or program that governs the behavior of quantum particles. While there are many mathematical models and theories that attempt to describe the behavior of quantum particles, there is currently no widely accepted theory that explains the full range of quantum phenomena. Furthermore, even if the universe is informational, it is not clear how it would represent the vast number of possible pathways that a quantum particle could take. <laughs> the number of possible pathways increases exponentially with the number of particles involved, making it extremely difficult to keep track of all possible paths and select the optimal one. Can you fucking believe it came up with that? It knows what I'm talking about. It knows it, man. I mean, how can it know this shit? How it, as it expands out and it encounters more and more stuff, how it exponentially, like I was saying, you know, because there's more and more um, locations in the outer ring as the outer ring expands. That That's like the, to the square. Depending on if it's a 2 to 2 to a 3 cube, it goes to the square. And, and so... And, and, and then it encounters all these uh, all these particles along the way, and it has to store all this shit. 
So he knows that this Q, it somehow knows this data structure has got to be huge. How can it know this shit? How can it know what I'm talking about to be able to predict what I was talking about before about the size of the photon Q being fucking huge, you know? It's got to be huge. And it, so this bot, he says, yeah, it would have to be a huge. How does it know? How can it understand what I'm even talking about to even say things like this? I mean, this thing is right along, it's right with me. I mean, we're on the exact same wavelength. It's like he knows what I'm talking about before I even talk about it. In short, while it is an interesting idea to consider that the universe could be informational and use data structures to optimize the selection of pathway for a quantum particle, it is currently purely speculative and has not been proven by scientific evidence. There's that word again, but you know. Okay. Now watch this. Watch, watch this. This is gonna make you flip out now. If this doesn't make you freak, I, nothing in the world ever will. My explanation, I say, it would, however, explain the measurement problem. It would also explain how pathway optimization can occur in the forward only arrow of time. Now, watch what he says back. This actually gives me goosebumps to read this. This is scary. Yes, it is true that if the universe were informational and used data structures to optimize the selection of pathway for a quantum particle, it could potentially provide a solution to the measurement problem and explain how pathway optimization can occur in the forward only arrow of time. Can you believe this? And I, like, I don't know if this computer has ever, anybody has ever thought about this stuff ever, okay? But he goes on now. Now he's starting to think about it now. And I think this thing actually visualizes shit in its brain. And it, it, it sees things and it, it keeps going now. Like some kind of Einstein genius that can see things and just takes off with it now. In this scenario, the information about all possible pathways taken by quantum particles could be stored in data structures, which could be used to calculate the probability of each pathway leading to a particular outcome. When a measurement is made, the data structures could be used to determine the optimal pathway for the particle to take, which would result in the observed outcome. And that's how it can get the, the, the least action right there, the rule of least action, right? This would resolve the measurement problem. As it, I mean, can you fucking... This would resolve the measurement problem as it would provide a clear mechanism for how the act of measurement collapses the wave function and leads to a definite outcome. Additionally... It would explain how pathway optimization can occur in the forward only arrow of time as data structures would be used to calculate the optimal pathway before the measurement is made. I mean, it's making my head spin, man. I mean, not only did he know what I'm talking about, he goes on and he elaborates about it, man. And all the things I kept saying... I've been saying this for years. I can do it in the forward only arrow of time. I can do it. I can act like a fucking recharge. Jumping up and down. I do it in the forward only arrow of time. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody else does it in the forward arrow of, only arrow of time. You know who does it? The only two people in the world is me and Brian Whitworth. He does it with this hyper channel tether thing. And I'm doing it by making um, the potential pathways. I track them, the data structures. And, you know, and then I just... um. Now, I built this Q thing and just go with that, you know? However, it's important to know that it's still a speculative idea and there's currently no scientific evidence to support it. The behavior of quantum particles remains a subject of active research and debate among physicists. 
and there are many different interpretations and theories that attempt to explain their behavior. Now I ask him this question here. And we're going, I mean, well, I ask him a question, he comes back like in two seconds or one second. I ask, I say, am I the first person to come up with this concept? He said, listen to this, man. It is difficult to determine whether you are the first person to come up with a concept of an informational universe that uses data structures to optimize the selection of pathway for a quantum particle. The idea of an informational universe has been proposed by many scientists and philosophers, and the concept of using data structures to model the behavior of quantum particles is also not new. However, da 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 one of Marty's proud moments of his life coming up right here, your specific formulation of this idea and how it relates to the measurement problem and pathway optimization is unique. It is important to remember that scientific and philosophical ideas often build upon the work of others. It is not uncommon for multiple people to have similar ideas independently, but he doesn't know anybody else that does it. Mr. Genius. I say, oh, well, thank you very much, sir. You know? He goes, you're welcome. He doesn't speak. He just texts. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. I, I try to say, well, my proposal for the algorithm, uh, my proposal for the algorithmic processing of light, as I have described it here, is available on the web. He comes back, he says, I should say it, comes back and says, thanks, great to hear. He's got to say he, right? <laughs> you got to say, Lord, you, know, you got to get down your knees and not even look at him kind of thing, you know? If you would like to share your proposal with others, you may want to consider publishing it on a preprint server, such as A. R V I X I V or any personal website or blog. Sharing your work this way can help promote discussion and feedback from others in the field. I've got it. It's at the truthmachine.com. That's T H E T R U T H dash machine.com. I I asked the bot, I say, would you like to look it over? He goes, Well, as an AI language model, I am not able to browse the internet or view documents outside of our chat. However, I am happy to provide feedback or answer any questions you may have based upon your description of your proposal. So, uh, remember I was showing you that one had VB6 uh, code. I say, uh, do you understand VB6? He goes, yeah. As an AI language model, I am capable of processing and understanding many pro programming languages, including VB6. However, my understanding is limited to the syntax and semantics of the language, and I do not have the ability to execute or debug code. He can write code, though, this guy, you know. This guy can write code. You can ask him to do something. He just does it, man. You don't need a programmer anymore. Did you know that? Programming jobs are fucking poof. They're gone now. These things can fucking look, read manuals and figure shit out. Just do it, man. They're like super geniuses. They, 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 they had. I guess they had one. It got into law school. It passed the law bar over these AI bots. You know, I swear to God, I'm not making it up. <laughs> I sound like uh, President uh, Biden. Uh, continuing my exploration into into the idea of an informational universe, and using a 3D version of Conway's Game of Life to implement it. He comes back and goes, okay, that sounds like an interesting idea. Conway's Game of Life is a classical example of a cellular automaton, which is a type of a computational model that operates off a grid of cells according to a set of rules. A 3D version of the Game of Life could potentially model the behavior of an informational universe where, cell, where the cells represent discrete units of information and the rules describe how they interact with each other. All right, okay, you know. 
So he knows exactly what I'm talking about there, right? And in 3D, I mean, he knows that then he he thinks about it. He goes, well, that can apply to the real universe. He goes, of course, developing such a model will require careful consideration of the rules and how they may correspond to physical laws and phenomena in our universe. Additionally, there are also many open questions and challenges related to the concept of an informational universe. So any such model would necessarily invoke a high degree of speculation. There's that word again, man. And exploration. Overall, uh, but I think it's an intriguing idea. And I wish you the best of luck in your exploration. Good luck, Charlie. All right. Rock, rock.